how to shift from that pro-cancer state to an anti-cancer state, how to bolster our anti-cancer defenses. If you've been diagnosed with cancer, then you need to understand this statement. All of us have cancer cells, but not all of us develop cancer. Our bodies have natural defenses against cancer. When we understand that cancer is biology, that it is science, when we understand what allows cancer to grow and develop and spread, then we can work backwards. We can work backwards to halt its progression. In today's video, I'm going to summarize my key insights into my favorite book, Anti-Cancer, A New Way of Life by Dr. David Servan Schreiber. Found this book randomly in a bookstore days after my diagnosis, and it has changed the trajectory of my healing journey. This book has been such a game changer because it not only educated me on what cancer really is, also propelled me to take a more proactive approach to prevent a recurrence. The main narrative in medical culture is that cancer is bad luck. And the reason that they take this narrative, this story that cancer is bad luck, is because they don't want to blame the patient. But what ends up happening is that it disempowers the patient. If you're new here, my name is Trafina Sofian and I am a cancer survivor and life coach. And my mission is to help you beat cancer, stress less and live a joyful life. If that's something that you're interested in, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It seems like as patients, we feel like we have to choose between conventional medicine and alternative medicine. And what this book allows you to see that we don't have to choose, that we can choose a holistic form of healing, that yes, can do conventional treatment, but we can also strengthen our anti-cancer defenses on top of conventional treatment. It doesn't have to be an either or, we can do both, we can do all. Dr. David Servan Schreiber himself is a cancer survivor, but his background is that he is a medical physician and a scientist. A few years later, uh, my cancer came back, which is the nature of these kinds of cancers. I had to go through surgery again. I had uh, a year of chemotherapy, I did radiotherapy. Uh, and this is when I realized that if I stuck to only conventional treatments, which saved my life a second time, if I stuck to only that, I would have a conventional outcome, which did not look good for my kind of cancer. So I used my skills as a physician and a scientist to find anything I could in the scientific literature, not in anything esoteric, in the scientific literature that would help me strengthen my body's ability to resist cancer. And this is the scientific story I want to tell you. When we believe that cancer is bad luck, when we believe that we don't have control, then what happens is that we take a backseat approach, we become passive, and all we can really do is hope for the best that our treatment is going to work. However, this book has really encouraged me and given me confidence to try out different things that will maximize conventional treatment. Dr. Servan Schreiber says that if you do the things in this book, then the price to pay is to lead a more fully conscious, more balanced, and in the end, a more beautiful life. Okay, let's get to the core idea of this book. Well, to put it in a nutshell, we need to treat not just the cancer and also what Dr. David Servan Schreiber calls the terrain, AKA our body, AKA the tumor environment. Think of cancer as the seed and our bodies as the soil. If you understand this metaphor, then you realize that the seed needs a particular environment, right? Sun, water, and fertile soil for it to grow and thrive. If the seed, however, is not in a favorable condition for it to grow, it's going to lay there dormant and not going to do anything. It's not gonna grow, it's not gonna thrive. It's just gonna sit there and probably shrivel away. And that's how we need to think about cancer. We can't just be treating the cancer, the tumor. We also need to also treat 
the terrain, the soil, which is our bodies. There are three ways in which we can manipulate our terrain in order to reveal cancer's weakness. Now let's look at the first one. We have powerful sentries, aka the immune system. One of the cool stories that we're told in the book is the story of Mighty Mouse. What happened was in an experiment, scientists injected cancerous cells into mice. And what usually happens is that these mice form tumors and later die. However, one day they found that one of the mice had actually survived these injections and they later injected the mouse with greater and greater amounts of cancerous cells, even as much as 10% of its body weight. And still this mouse, mighty mouse, resisted forming tumors. And what they found is that mighty mouse had a very active immune system. And this is what allowed him to resist these astronomical doses of cancer cells. And so one of the most powerful anti-cancer defenses that we have is our immune system and especially what's called the natural killer cells. The next idea that reveals cancer's weakness is what's called inflammation. If you don't know what inflammation is, just imagine if you had cut your hand open with a knife. Now that finger is going to be red, it's going to be hot and it's going to be painful. Now that is inflammation at work. Now acute inflammation is actually very useful for the body because it allows us to repair damaged tissues just like that cut in my finger. And it does this by releasing inflammatory substances such as cytokines, prostaglandins, and leukotrienes. However, when we have chronic inflammation, which the cause I'm going to be talking about later on in the video, so make sure you watch till the end. If we have chronic inflammation in our bodies, then cancer cells that may be dormant in our bodies can exploit that perfect environment for its growth and spread. Now, about one in six cancer is due to a pro-inflammatory state. For example, cervical cancer is due to chronic infection of the human papilloma virus. Colon cancer is due to chronic inflammatory disease of the intestine. Cancer of the stomach, infection of the stomach by Helicobacter pylori. Cancer of the liver is caused by infection of Hep B and C virus. Mesothelioma is due to inflammation of the lungs caused by breathing in asbestos. Lung cancer can be caused by toxic cigarette smoke. There are lots of things that can cause chronic inflammation. In a normal repair process, inflammation turns on and then it turns off. However, with chronic inflammation, because the inflammation never stops, cancer is then able to exploit this perfect environment, this fertile environment for its growth and spread. And so essentially we can regard cancer as a wound that never heals. If we're able to dampen down the inflammation, then that's going to halt cancer in its tracks. The next strategy that we can use to halt cancer is to cutting its supply lines. And this relates to a term called angiogenesis, which simply means the generation of new blood vessels. Cancerous cells cannot grow into tumors or masses if they don't have a blood supply. It needs a blood supply to live, to give it nutrient and take away the waste product. And therefore, if we can prevent the blood supply from forming, therefore we can prevent tumors from growing because essentially microscopic cancer cells don't hurt us. It's only when tumors grow big and they invade vital organs in our bodies that they become lethal. And so angiogenesis becomes a very important point of cancer's weaknesses because if we can disrupt the formation of these blood vessels, if we can disrupt the process of angiogenesis, then we can stop the spread of 
disease. However, anti-angiogenic drugs like avastatin has proved to be disappointing, not to mention some serious side effects when taking this drug. However, there are anti-angiogenic compounds in the foods that we eat. And so you know the three things that are important to cancer biology and to our own cancer defenses. The first is immune system, the second is inflammation, and the third is angiogenesis. I hope this video is useful. Let me know in the comments which part of cancer biology was surprising for you. And don't forget next week to watch part two of this video about how we can practically bolster our natural cancer defenses.